already on October 28th of 1939, after the Nazi soldiers conquered Poland, the occupation administration issued an order prohibiting Jews from entering the center of Lodz. For violations of the order, the perpetrators were shot on the spot. Then, in February of 1940, all Jews of Lodz were forcibly evicted to the northern part of the city, which was fenced in with constructed walls and rows of barbed wire. That is how one of the largest Jewish ghettos in Europe began its terrible history. Water, electricity and heat were completely cut off in the ghetto area, and the prisoners were obliged to work in the garment factories organized there for the Nazi German army. The living conditions were horrendous. They were of course fed once a day with something like soup, and once a week with a small ration, 100 grams of peas, 100 grams of fish, 200 grams of rice flour, 70 grams of butter, 40 grams of honey, 150 grams of salt, 200 grams of beets, 200 grams of carrots, a pack of matches. The rations themselves were not given free of charge, but were practically bought. Those who were unable to pay for their weekly allowance were starving to death. However, the rations were not enough to even survive. It is sufficient to say that in two years the territory of the ghetto was a bare wasteland on which nothing grew. Grass as well as cats and dogs, rats and mice were eaten. Prisoners dug earthworms out of the ground and caught butterflies and bugs to eat. Eventually, according to survivors' memories, even birds stopped flying in the ghetto. Prisoners died daily by the dozens from starvation, disease and shootings. For example, Nazi guards immediately killed the victims if they tried to approach the border of the ghetto. To at least save their children, parents who could no longer work sent their children to school, where every day students were given a bowl of soup. Moreover, children often became the main breadwinners, taking food from the weaker and simply stealing. Many parents, unable to bear the thought of being unable to feed their own children, committed suicide. In the ghettos, there have been even documented cases of self-eating, in which prisoners, distraught from extreme hunger, ate their own fingers, hands or feet. But the most terrible day in the history of the Lodz ghetto occurred on September 4th, 1942, when everyone was ordered to assemble at 2 p.m. on Fireman Square. After a crowd of many thousands had gathered on the square, Mordecai Haim Ramkowski, chairman of the Council of Jewish Elders and head of the Jewish self-government of the ghetto, made the keynote speech. King of the Ghetto Although Mordecai's identity is still a subject of debate among historians, many firmly believe that it was thanks to him that the ghetto survived for four years at all. He succeeded in proving to the Nazis the necessity of the ghetto by making the fundamental principle of work for survival. By working in the clothing factories and in the production of everyday objects, the Jews earned not only miserable pittance, but also the right to live. It was thanks to Mordecai's efforts that the practice of feeding children in schools that very bowl of soup was introduced. Children even dedicated their poems and letters to him. Good Mr. Chairperson, my name is Serenka Levi. I am nine years old. I ask you very much, good pen chairman, to direct my mother to work in the head department. If my mother starts earning money, she can feed me and I will come to thank you, good grandpa. Thus, all prisoners listened to the words of Mordecai, who was considered the king of the ghetto. Great Prohibition The speech in square by Mordecai Chaim Romkowski, along with Churchill's appeal to the British at the beginning of World War II, and Fidel Castro's speech have been listed by American historians as among the most important and influential speeches of the 20th century. The speech by the chairman of the Council of Jewish Elders struck like a thunderbolt from a clear sky for all the ghetto prisoners who had no idea that their awful conditions of living could become even worse. In my declining years I'm compelled to plead, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, give me your children. Yesterday we received orders to expel more than 20,000 Jews from the ghetto. We were told, if you do not agree, we will do it ourselves. I have to take your children away from you, because if I don't, for God's sake, others will be taken away too. I stretch out my hands to you, and I beg you, put these sacrifices in my hands, so that we can avoid more victims. Today, I am forced to stretch out my hands to you and beg. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, 
give me our children. The day after this speech, September 5th, all prisoners were ordered to disperse to their places of residence and not to leave their homes, because otherwise the death penalty was awaiting them. The ghetto inhabitants were informed that children under 10 years of age, the elderly over 65, and the seriously ill would be deported from lots. In Nazi terminology, an operation was launched to purge the ghetto of the unproductive part of the population. The start of the operation was initially entrusted to units of the local police, which by the way consisted of Jews. The Nazis promised the policemen an incredible amount of food rations for their work. One and a half kilograms of bread, sugar and sausage per day. In every apartment a police squad demanded documents, identifying those who were to be deported. From the very first hours, however, it became clear that the Jewish police were not suited for their intended role. First, many inhabitants had paid off to save their children or parents. Secondly, the police themselves could not tear apart the families of people whom they often knew well. Some lost consciousness or went insane. Many ended up committing suicide. That is why the SS units took over the task. Deportations Unlike the Jewish policemen, these ones were unceremonious. The Nazis did not even look at the documents, identifying those to be deported by sight. Therefore, both those under 10 years of age and those over 65 were selected. Parents who refused to give up their children were shot on the spot. In one week alone, more than 600 people were killed in this way. And in the hospitals, the punishers were very harsh. Sick children who could not walk were simply thrown out of the window into the back of a truck, and then those who were able to walk were taken out. This was confirmed by one of the surviving prisoners, Henke Grossman. Was on Mlinarska Street. They were cleaning the hospital. Children were thrown out of windows from the fourth floor. They threw them out of the windows into trucks like some things. Then they took out all the people who could walk. In half an hour or even 15 minutes, they completely cleared the hospital, which had several hundred people in it. Then we found out that this wasn't just happening in this hospital. According to various estimates by historians, within a week the Nazis removed from the Lodz ghetto between 15 and 20,000 old people and children. And the adults, who from hunger looked much older than their years, also did not escape deportation. Realizing that death was certain, many parents killed their own children before the Nazis arrived and then committed suicide themselves. Fate of the Deportees at first, all those selected in the ghetto were taken to specially organized filtration points. Then large groups were formed and transported to the village of Chelmno, which is 70 kilometers from Lodz. The first concentration camp in Poland operated there, where from December 7th of 1941, a conveyor belt of extermination of Jews was organized. Those who arrived were informed that they were going to a work camp, but first they had to be given a sanitation treatment. The batch of prisoners was led to the castle, where the prisoners followed signs to get to the shower room. As a matter of fact, there were three shower cabinets used at Chelmno. When a batch of prisoners entered the van, the doors were closed and the gas was turned on. The truck would drive to the forest of Zhukov. The asphyxiated prisoners were thrown into the graves prepared in advance for 30-40 people, or they were burned in the two newly built crematoriums. During the entire existence of the concentration camp, 320,000 Jews, who were brought from almost all European countries, were exterminated there. Between September 5th and 12th, 1942, according to the surviving report of Mordecai Chaim Ramkowski, 15,859 people were removed from the Lodz ghetto. However, many historians believe that in fact about 20,000 were taken out and Romkowski's understated figures helped to obtain additional rations for those remaining in the ghetto at the expense of the dead people. All in all, from September of 1942 to August 1944, about 70,000 people were transported from Lodz to Chelmno for extermination. The remaining 65,000 survivors of the Lodz ghetto were deported to the Auschwitz concentration camp. When the Red Army entered Lodz, about 900 people somehow survived in the dead city, as the ghetto was called. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel.